a number of years ago, I decided to spend the month of August in the Grand Budapest. The center of the story is Gustav and Zero. What do you want? But there's quite a large cast of supporting characters. The cast of the movie is incredible. The ensemble keeps growing and growing. It is a wealthy cast of characters. I mean, I think anyone looking at all the actors in this would be envious. We have Jude Law. Owen Wilson. Edward Norton. Harvey Keitel. And the wonderful Saoirse Ronan. She's charming. She's so charming. I remember being sent the cast list and I thought it must be like three different films or something. I mean, Tilda Swinton, Willem Dafoe. Adrian Brody, the legend Bill Murray. Please. Jason Schwartzman, Jeff Goldblum. I have Murray Abrahams. Bob Balaban. Tony Revolori. So many names. Uh, Tom Wilkinson. Stop it! Stop it! Don't! Don't do it! Ray Fiennes, of course. I'm afraid that's me, darling. Gustav was written for Rafe. I really don't know who else could have played this. Monsieur Gustav is one of the greatest characters that Wes has ever written. Nobody could play this more perfectly than Rafe. You're always anxious before you travel. I admit you appear to be suffering a more acute attack on this occasion, but truly and honestly, oh dear God, what have you done to your fingernails? I beg your pardon. This diabolical varnish, the color is completely wrong. Oh, really? Don't you like it? It's got to be so much fun for Rafe because he's never played a part like this. Rafe is amazing. He really enveloped himself in the character. Since the first moment I met him, he was Mr. Gustav. It's a testament to Wes. He attracts a spectacular group of people in every capacity. Excellent, excellent. Good, keep going, keep going. There was something really lovely about the shoot. It was like a huge rambling house party or a camp. It felt like a sort of eccentric family project, you know, which I think is the way Wes likes it. We have dinner together every night, and I remember the first night I went down for dinner with everyone. It's like Jeff Goldblum and Ray Fiennes, Jude Law and Edward Norton, and they're talking about acting. And then Wes is at the head of the table, and it's just, it's a bit surreal, you know, because suddenly there's all these incredible actors who have been around for such a long time and been a part of a lot of his films as well, which is really nice. He really makes the making of the movies a living experience. That's why it's so interesting, is that we're living this life in this hotel, in this small, you know, sort of beautiful, you know, preserved town. He cultivated among the cast and the crew a feeling that's a lot like you get from the society of the Crossed Keys, this sense of unity and, like, tribalism. It's all about great characters and great people that you want to know. And you do end up with performances from actors that you've always loved, but you've never seen them do this before. I think that's the West's secret. The fact that he's got all these great folk together is a tribute to him as a person and as a filmmaker. People appreciate his work and they love the characters he creates and everyone wants to be a part of it. Action. This movie, like all Wes Anderson movies, is fabulous and has great characters in it. How fast can you pack? Five minutes. Do it. And bring a bottle of the Pouille Jouvet 26 in an ice bucket with two glasses so we don't have to drink the cat piss they serve in the dining car. It's shining light and tribute to these people who are, like Wes Anderson, uniquely civilized, courteous, generous, sweet, sophisticated, and refined. I want them to be these larger-than-life people in real life. I'm hoping to make sort of the documentary version of these very theatrical characters. Who's this interesting old fellow? Don't you know? Don't you recognize him? To me, what makes Wes's movies great is that they are really, really detailed looks at, at worlds you normally wouldn't get to see. Wes's worlds are always so bold and clear, and the characters are all there. They're all like little chips off of Wes's perception of the universe. He's amazing, because I think in every film that he does, it's very much his sort of trademark. Everything is Wes Anderson. For many of us, Wes has been kind of a pole star of individual, personal vision. His thing is very unique, touching and heartfelt and hilarious, and those are the people you want to work with. To Monsieur Gustav H., I bequeath a painting known as Boy with Apple. Wow. What? Who's Gustav H.? I'm afraid that's me, darling. He's written the script, so knows exactly what he wants. But his overall demeanor is one of enthusiasm and excitement at, at the, hit the world he's written coming to life. In popular cinema, it's weird for uh, a director to have such a heavy personal stamp. Because particularly in popular movies, the director is less a force. But here, all these people work for this West world.
Of course, I know the way I tend to shoot these things and my instincts for how to how to stage the scenes and what the sets are like and all those things are not entirely based on reality. When he comes to it, and he's working with Adam Stockhausen on the scenery, Melina Cannonero, the brilliant costume designer, when you come to the set and you see not only what you're wearing, which he gives you it's terrifically you a lot of your character, you know, um, but you see everybody else, it's um, jaw-dropping and terrifically impressive and delightful to a guy like me. He's so meticulous and so particular that it's amazing because you come on set and you know that you're safe with him. To put it in words, I guess you could say amazing, brilliant. He's just so on top of everything. It's fantastic to work with someone like that. I just long for Wes Anderson's films to come out as someone in the cinema and, you know, to be given the chance to even be in the frame and be on the set, which is the best bit of all, even better than being in the cinema, is being on a Wes Anderson set. I love you. I love you. I'm talking. It's great when a master filmmaker keeps surprising you, which I think is what this movie does on all levels. It has a Wes spin on it. It has an irony. It's got a perversity. It's got a hint of his own personal aesthetic fetishes. It's obvious from his library of work already that he has a very particular vision. And I think it's refreshing for everyone to work with someone who knows exactly what they want, especially in pleasant surroundings. And he's such a gentleman that you know you're going to have a good time. Run to the Cathedral of Santa Maria in Bruckneplatz, buy one of the plain half-length candles and take back four Klubecks in change. Light it in the sacristy, say a brief rosary, then go to Mendel's and get me a courtesan au chocolat. If there's any money left, give it to the crippled shoeshine boy. Right away, sir. Visita mi canal.